Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Uh, I want to talk about two specific elements of uh, Part 1, and I've got a question for the Minister uh, in relation to the first of those. Essentially, a large part of what Part 1 does is increase the obligations on borrowers to do certain things. And they are actually things that I do support. They are, for instance, if someone is going to be away from New Zealand, that they have an obligation to tell the Commissioner where they're going to be, how to contact them, how they can actually uh, uh, be, uh, co work on the loan scheme with the Inland Revenue Department. And I'm, you know, that's a, a, not a bad thing necessarily, Mr Speaker. In fact, I think it's quite useful. Uh, Clause 14 is an example of this about changes to, uh, to, the, to the residency. But in particular, um, I want to uh, ask the, the Minister about Clause 23, which is the... Uh, question of notifying a commission, the Commissioner of absence from New Zealand of 184 or more days. And it's, the language here has changed. It very much talks about must. This is what a borrower must do, and, and that's important. One of my concerns over a period of time, Mr Chair, has been the awareness of borrowers of their obligations when they leave the country. And I know as somebody both as a, having a background in, in working on these issues uh, in the past, both as a student politician working for a university and now as a constituency MP, I'd like to ask the Minister what the intent is around advertising of obligations. Uh, is there going to be any more work uh, done to ensure that borrowers who leave New Zealand actually know what their obligations are? Because I do agree, Mr Speaker, regardless of whatever concerns I might have about the cost of tertiary education or the amount of debt that students have, once a student leaves New Zealand, I do want to make sure that the borrower, sorry, leaves New Zealand, I do want to make sure that that borrower is aware of their obligations and is meeting their obligations. It is not fair for someone to leave New Zealand and disappear off the radar screen and not have to, uh, to make repayments, whereas somebody who stays in New Zealand and works hard... Uh, um, is, is making those repayments. And so I would like to hear from the Minister what is envisaged in terms of new uh, ways of letting people know about their obligations, which have been enhanced. There are already obligations, I do acknowledge that, but this bill does enhance what those obligations are, and I think it's important that borrowers are made aware of those, and I would like the Minister to be able to, uh, to let us know what happens there. I do want to make one point, which is, which is to congratulate uh, the Minister and, and indeed the Select Committee. Uh, the way in which um, some changes have been made, not just in this um, bill but previously as well, around the treatment of borrowers who aren't in New Zealand but for the purposes of the law are treated as if they are. And in particular that's people who are working for the government of New Zealand overseas and that's always been the case but the question of their partners uh, is an important one and I, and I think that's something that's really useful. It's important to say today that if somebody is working overseas um, in the service of New Zealand or uh, somebody who's undertaking postgraduate study overseas uh, or indeed somebody who's undertaking voluntary work and that's in Schedule 1, Mr, Mr Chair, is there is a, now a, an explanation of what constitutes acceptable voluntary work uh, for the purposes of this bill. For all of those people it is now possible for their partners to be able to be treated as if they are in New Zealand. And I think that is a very good thing, uh, Mr. Mr Speaker. It's important that when people are overseas in the service of New Zealand, they're, that they're not having to worry about um, things like interest on student loans. Uh, and so I think uh, Clause 20 deals with that in particular, and Schedule 1, and both of those are very good things. So, so that's my question to the Minister, is around the advertising. Uh, the only other real point I want to make in Part 1, Mr Chair, is around this question of Clause 10D, the student loan establishment fee. And as I said in my second reading contribution, we are looking at a situation now where we're told in the regulatory impact statement that there are not going to be additional costs on inland revenue. We're told that the computer system that inland revenue is bringing in will in fact reduce costs. We're told that the electronic uh, arrangements for borrowers to communicate with IRD are in fact going to reduce costs. Yet, in Clause D, the fee for students um, in terms of the uh, establishment fee goes up from $50 to $60. And then later in Part 5, Mr uh, Chair, we'll come to the new $40 management fee. So on top of it, we're actually talking about a $50 increase in total in costs to borrowers on an annual basis. That seems to me to be a pretty big increase of cost relative to a system that we're told is actually going to be reducing in cost to the government. 
And that's why on the side of the House we're suspicious of this as, a, as, a, as essentially a revenue grab by the government. Mr Chair, just, just briefly, Mr Chair, I won't take a, a full further call, uh, just to say that we think that this does look like the reintroduction of interest by stealth. It looks to us as if a government that wanted to bring in interest on student loans, because Mr Tremaine, as an opposition, we're going to vote for things that are good and useful, like the electronic goods. Mr Tremaine clearly hasn't been listening to the second reading debate or to the committee stages. The Labour Party is supporting this bill because it brings in important changes around the electronic management. But just because we're supporting the overall intent of the bill doesn't mean we have to support every single clause. And Mr Tremaine might like to take a call on Clause 10D and tell us why the administration fee is going up to 60 bucks. And then when we get to point to to Part 5, he might like to take a call on why a new fee of $40 has been introduced at a time when we're told the loan scheme itself is going to become more affordable to the government because of the other changes that we do support in the bill. And it really does look like the introduction of interest by stealth because this is a national government that doesn't have I can't use that word. This is a national government that will not go through on what it's earlier said, that it wants to reintroduce interest to the student loan scheme. Mr Finlayson wants to reintroduce interest to the student loan scheme. I know that. Lots of members on the other side of the House do, but they've decided for political reasons that they're not going to, and so, and so they've, told, they've said for political reasons they're not going to, so by the back door... Something has been brought in here with an increase in, to the establishment fee to $60 and the new fee of $40 that will be coming in in Part 5. So, Mr Chair, on this side of the House, uh, we have real concerns about that. While there are some very good elements to uh, Part 1 in this bill, Clause 10D is, is one that, on this side of the House, we find it very difficult to support because it does look like it is the national government trying to reintroduce interest by stealth. Uh, Ian Lees Galloway. Just picking up on where Grant Robinson left off on clause 10D.